Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Astro and HD with T and D, but it's astrology and human design brought to you in a very grounded and loving way from yours truly, Tara Kinden and Miss Dominique Caramillo. Caramillo. <laughs> I actually am doing very well not butchering it these days. Yeah. So let me just share with you what's behind this video, why we're doing this for you, and our, our goal in bringing what we know to your homes and giving you more power to get to know yourself so you can show up more authentically, you know, and nurture yourself, nurture your family. That's Dom's um, area of focus mm -hmm. is on helping the mamas get really connected to themselves, but any woman, any woman who is so ready to take back her power and be her worth and understand how we're being affected by the astrology by our human design charts, your energetic expression. So world around us. <laughs> around us. So we are, you know, bringing this to you so you have a better context of what's going to happen under the, the new moons because, well, this actually stemmed from the candles. So I create the Witch and Wicks candle line. And we wanted to, or I wanted to know better what stones to put in based on what was happening, you know, planetarily and energetically. So that's why we sort of came up with this idea to put this together. So what we're going to do is walk you through the combination of what's happening astrologically and then what's being lit up energetically within your human design chart. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and this beautiful chart we put together to highlight at the same time so that you would be able to see what we see and how we kind of riff off of each other. It's just way more fun this way. We're going to keep making this better as we go. So we hope you bear with us through mm -hmm. the initial hiccups, <laughs> yeah. dogs barking and all the things. Okay. So Dom, why don't you start with the astrological expectation okay. what's happening okay okay cool hello everyone and welcome back to astro hd with tmd um so yeah so this chart you're looking at on the screen is the new moon chart for february 11th 2021 it is set for los angeles time just so you know so let's not worry about the house systems uh, that's based on where you are so um what we'll focus on here is all these great energies and the first thing that jumps out to all of us i'm sure is this aquarius energy <laughs> that is being totally amplified um that obviously new moon is exactly at 23 aquarius and that sun there is leading the charge i call it the charge of change and progression and progress um, of all that aquarian energy the moon right there we have Pallas athena in there and i left her in because she is this goddess as i was learning about her the goddess of creative intelligence um, which I thought was awesome. And she actually is associated with Aquarian energy. So she's right there. And then you have Mercury um, in retrograde, which we will dive into. And then we have Venus conjunct Jupiter at 12. And then we have Saturn tagging along here at the end in um, Aquarius as well. And he is actually moving towards his first square with Uranus of the year, which will happen on the 17th. But we're still, we're going to feel that even during this new moon. So overall, there is a strong sort of fixed air energy amplifying this new moon. And Mercury, this planet of communication, is retrograde right in the middle of this, what I'm calling the uh, squad. <laughs> I'm calling this the squad because there's this a lot of feminine energy in here and this is a lot about change and progress, but also he's sitting right there in the middle of all of this energy and sort of like the sun, moon, and palace over here and Venus and Jupiter working hard together over here with Saturn and being a bit of a mediator, I feel, in the mix of this. Or you could say the middle child of this misfit group of kids. 
<laughs> and I know you're going to dive into the energies of that and how we can dive into that. But I think for this new moon, it's going to be about so many ideas coming in, but actually also revisiting and reworking and collaborating with um, uh, it in conjunction with others, all of these sort of ideas that you may have been pondering on or imagining for so long that didn't seem possible may seem possible. The timing might be right. And there's all these possibilities hanging around. There may not be because this moon is actually void of course at this moment and with Mercury retrograde, there's gonna be some miscommunications. We are dealing with tech. So I would expect, you know, back up your computers, you know, double check your schedules, all that fun stuff, because there will be glitches without a doubt. There will be miscommunication and there will be things that get slow to go. And if you have that mentality when you're working with setting those intentions, just know, yeah, I'm going to slowly start. Let me look back at all these ideas I've been working on for maybe years, maybe months, right? And think, how can I reimagine this? Who can I work with? that might help progress this forward? What groups am I involved in? Who do I want to, what are my visions and my goals and who am I doing this for? You know, what, who, what group or what people am I trying to serve in stepping into my originality and my unique um, self-expression, bringing my unique knowledge to the world in what platform, social media wise or otherwise, how do I want to bring this to the world to help move things forward? And, this is the sort of discovery and the uh, process of reviewing and reworking all of that stuff. There will be, and because you've got this energy of electric energy of Aquarius, things can move fast. So there could still be a, a series of events that happen quickly to move things along faster than you ever dreamed of but not necessarily that they're going to be launched, but like things come together. Oh my gosh, I remember that. I can do this. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm going to work with that person. And all of a sudden it's like magically things can come together. You might not just be able to launch yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. There won't be this like go. So it's about setting intentions, I think, for what is my original gift? What is the unique knowledge or perspective I have that can um, con that I can contribute to a group, to a lar to the larger world, to my family, to a relationship, to progress and move things forward in a way that works for everyone, that's mutually beneficial, that is loving and kind and, and uplifting and helping all rise, as I was saying about the full moon. So I think that that is a good um, way to sort of prepare yourself and um, the intentions that you set aren't necessarily about things that are going to happen like right away. But again, what can I look back at or reflect on or reconsider or reimagine or rethink that I can work and put together in a way that really can move things forward beyond anything I ever imagined before or have trusting in that the universe is going to guide you in the direction of your highest potential of your highest worth of your highest gifts and show you the best place to put those things um, and the most the best efforts and ways to put that and with the square Saturn and Uranus uh, moving into that square this is where it can be tough sometimes where what's hard to change change isn't easy and breaking out of old habits or molds and also when you're working with people who don't really want to move things forward or are stuck in old ways and then you're if you're pushing them to progress beyond their comfort zone just yet so it's finding a middle ground in order to reach solutions or ways forward and can you talk to us just a little bit about mars what's he doing in all of this mix so mars is still in taurus and um moving away from that conjunction but Mars is still that, that slowing down of that energy and fo allowing you to focus it in tangible projects. It's definitely like shaking things up. He it's still close to enough. Is he like? Well, he's, yeah, he's got um, a square, closest square to Mercury. See how this is at 16 yeah. and that's at 18. It's what they call separating. So it's moving away and, and uh, Mercury is moving backwards. So it's going to be moving, you know, um, so it's a separating square, but still the tension is there. So you could have a hard time if you get into some 
this is where miscommunications can happen and then people cannot just so I misunderstand you. It's like, I don't understand you. <laughs> this is where people can freak out or have arguments and dig into like, no, you know, and, and, and fight to get their point across. Or this is where a lot of people are talking like that self-righteousness and like what I believe is right and you're wrong, you know, that kind of thing. So the, okay. the, the best way to handle that is to try and come from this place of an open mind and not digging into what you've always believed to be true. Maybe there is another perspective, maybe, you know, and trying to really put yourself in the shoes of another person or just seeing things from a whole new perspective and listening and you learn something new and you're like, wow, I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. And it just relieves the pressure as opposed to wanting to like, I'm right, you're wrong, you know, um, well, and that's going to make things just a little more tense. Right. And I think like from this, let's kind of move into energetically what's ahead, what to expect, what it might look like, how it might show up for you. And for those of you who are brand new to human design, this is that sort of unconscious part of ourselves and the conscious part of ourselves where the planets are lined up. I'm going to talk more to the conscious side because you're going to be pretty pretty aware of this energy. And while this is all happening in this beautiful new moon, we're going to get workforce, life force energy. So for those of you who are, you know, projectors, reflectors, manifestors, you're going to get a little tap in on some of this beautiful life force, workforce, get things moving energy, which will be kind of exciting if you don't have access to that regularly. And you as a generator, like as the, the chart is showing us, it's an emotional generator. It's kind of asking us to be in tune with our feelings. And it's funny because our feelings will be very much aligned with your Venus and your Jupiter. And so if we look at this as more of a gift, connecting to our feminine creativity, our feminine expression, really going deep into what our feeling and sensing, and before we hit record, I love to pull a card to kind of see like, what is the theme? What do people need to hear, you know, uh, specifically to where they're at right now? An inner child came forward. So there may be some, you know, revisiting or re-emerging of what lit you up as a child for creativity mm -hmm. and to look at creativity and desire in a different way without that sort of hardened adult view, if you will, to open up your mind a little bit more expansively to think about, you know, it's, this is that really aura penetrating energy to really feel into what are my relationships feeling like? And what is the environment, my community really feeling? You just this, this deep sensing of what is happening emotionally. So you may be a little overwhelmed with emotions and, you know, when you feel that way, if you are feeling that way, tapping into your creative outlet. And if you don't have one, think back to a time when you were feeling somewhat creatively more expressed. So your head is going to be defined with this head center and this Ajna. You're going to know everything and you're going to have a hard time communicating what you want because the throat is open. Okay, so what's the beautiful thing here? Be wise with your words and be careful about what you're saying because what, and this holds true at all times, what you say matters and it's the first phase in the manifestation process, process into the physical plane. And we will talk a little bit about manifestation when we kind of get rolling here, but just be aware of that openness, you know, but you come into your heart, you speak. From So like this 13 is in your communication. This is in your mercury, right? And the 13 is all about narration. So watching the words that you say because they using the power of your personal narrative to create with power and intention. It is calling you like the 13 is calling you out to say, hey, watch your words, use them wisely. And what I found really interesting was that Mars is in the two. And this is about allowing. And allowing is not very feminine energy, right? 
So there may be this thing about, you may feel very, something comes up where you're like, I can't, allow, I don't want to let somebody else help me out here. I don't want to relinquish control. I, so Mars may be holding on tight to be like, no, we're going to do it this way. And it's going to prevent you from really allowing the abundance to flow through, allowing whatever opportunities that are showing up for you in your external environment to respond to, especially if you're getting this generator energy, it may just be like a flavor of that. And then you pull it into your own, um, your own aura type and, and feel into it, but just maybe something underlying there that may show up where you need to be a little bit more open. And with I wasn't going to talk too much about the unconscious side, but Mars is in the 51, which is the gate of shock. So this is where we talked about like glitches with, with, you know, you were saying about technology, but this could be like a glitch in, you know, if you're getting a little too far off your path, you may get shocked back on it during this time. Mm. So because with that defined G, it's like you only have limited options, but if you are headed down the wrong path with whatever creatively you're trying to think or expand on, you know, you may get jolted back into, oh, hey, actually, this is where you're supposed to be going. Cool. So um, the other thing with just the Jupiter and your Venus are both in this gate 19, which runs off the root. Okay, so this is that sensing. And the one thing to be very conscious of in this sensing energy is that you're getting this whole channel, which we call synthesis, but that 19, again, is just so sensitive in its lower expression. It can be highly, highly, highly sensitive, but it is in its highest expression, a tuning, a tuning in, and its mastery is around sensing the emotional needs of others and your community and knowing how to bring the emotional energy back into alignment Efficiency. Sorry, no. Oh, poor Sparky. I know. It's all right. So with sufficiency, right? Because it's the ability to be emotionally vulnerable so that you can increase your heart-to-heart -heart connections. But where Mars may be like, no, we're not going to let this happen. We're not going to allow you to get too yeah. emotional. <laughs> yeah. And I thought it was interesting you said that uh, the throat is open and Mars in the chart is in Taurus, which rules the throat. And then you have that resistance of like, oh, if something comes you're like, no, I want it this way. You know, careful with your words. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. a lot of like breathing, going back into, you know, if you're having trouble with the creative outlet, because I feel like that creative essence, that creative push from Venus could really help, you know, open, because they're... Jupiter and Venus are literally like side by side here and they are literally thinking gate. So it's like your gift and your feminine power, your feminine essence, your creativity, your self-worth, all your expression is like tune into your environment, tune in to yourself. Yes. I just thought of this too. Like yeah. me, Roger was thinking two and two and one is three. So two and three, but also look at Pallas Athena. She's 21. Two and one is three. So I was thinking that collaborative, that, you know, working with others, you know, what can we, what can we bring together? You know, how can we, you know, add value, you know, our value to, to things, but that, um, one and two makes three. What can we create? What can together we create? You know, um, I wonder if there's a sense of like coming into your power here, really coming into your own power and discovering like coming to that awareness that it's time for you to really step forward as your most creatively expressed self and that there is this element of surrender. So we look at Neptune, which isn't really so much being pulled into the chart, but very, very, very important because this is where we're connecting to that spiritual side of ourselves. And it's asking us to surrender. Now, for those of you who are like, surrender is a swear word. I don't even want to use that word. I hate that <laughs> word. Look at it this way. It's, I like, love it. it's surrendering allows you to just take a step back and create some space between you and the thing, between you and whatever. 
especially if you're so hard on yourself right now being like, okay, it's February. I need to create something. It's the second month of the year. Right. It's like surrendering into the flow of what could be possible because it's in Allowance. Pisces, allowing, opening up, um, and trusting that your passions, trusting that your deepest desires are being supported by universal flow here that flow of abundance coming back to allowing and to encourage you to follow your passion, to know you are supported. Cause this isn't always, we don't always remember how supported we are. So to learn how to regulate your emotional energy, which is also tied to this emotional solar plexus. And here it is. Mm -hmm. um, so that you have, so that you can stay in the faith and the energy of this is coming, this is going to work. I don't need to push this, trusting in divine timing so that everything can work out perfectly in its own time. Yeah. And I'll just say too that Neptune is still like squaring. It's moving away from a square to the nodal axis. And I was just happening to look here that the north node is in Gemini is in the 45, which comes off the throat as well. Yeah. And the 45 is about sharing resources. So the 45 is all around like, how are you able to teach other people how to share in the resources? And this could be like resource creative energy. This could be about like, how do you utilize people who really will thrive in this area may be able to share ways that they're getting juicy and creative in this time. And, you know, being able to have that bigger vision or that sort of imaginatory like you know going into fantasy land to call forth the big idea because you're like plugged into super consciousness all the juicy stuff is coming through and um what else did i want to say oh ideas is being lit up by your moon so this gate i love this gate i have this gate consciously and it's about having so many ideas it's like you go down to the river of ideas and you don't just take a little bucket you're like a backloader like a whole water cooler you got all these ideas you may get flooded with ideas but remember there's no pressure for you to do all of them some of these ideas you're getting may be brilliant for a friend brilliant for somebody you know but there's with this open throat it's like don't go barfing out all your ideas everywhere wait for someone to ask you for them, depending on what your strategy, your type is, right? Um, be aware of that, but that you have the gift of that. And then the 49, of course, which is connecting our Venus, connecting our Jupiter is coming over here. And the moon is saying, okay, guys, what are you really wanting to creatively bring forward? Because that 49 is the catalyst. It's like, boom, let's go do this. Don't quit too early because we're, we're, we're ready. You know, do you, if you are in the flow and you're allowing the surrender and you're trusting that everything is going to be working out, there's like this element of divine timing that if you can hold on to your own value long enough, you can hold on to that vision and trust everything you want can come true, can come to fruition in the physical world. <laughs> I thought that is totally me, Tara. You're talking because, of course, I'm an Aquarius, right? And my birthday is next week, so I'll have Mercury retrograde in my solar turn, right? So that is absolutely what I've tried to do is in all of these ideas flowing and all the things I've been thinking about and wanting to revisit and all the projects and stuff and wanting to do, but uh, trying to sit quietly and allow and also listen to what is really coming up for the idea or the path or the collaboration or the vision as opposed to pushing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that, especially if you're someone like me, who's always in the head with the ideas um, and feeling like you can't get anywhere. So I think that that grounding and that trusting and that allowing will also help with clarity and remembering that it's Mercury retrograde goes, okay, like, it's, it's not all going to happen fast. Or it's not going to happen in the way. Well, it's asking you, what's the story you know. you're telling? What <laughs> yeah, story are you deal. telling? Yeah. What, what is the, why do you want, you have all these yeah. ideas. Goes, what is the purpose? Why? Consciously, it's in truth, right? So are you being truthful about your story? Mm -hmm. Are you getting caught up in the dramas of what you think it is when it's, it's like hold the higher vision. 
-hmm. or what it could be because maybe you can talk to us about this so with that sun and the moon being conjunct here and that this is setting off you know uh uh it's setting off a three year, it's going into 2023, this, this particular degree of Aquarius, right? So it's mm -hmm. kind of like setting in motion, whatever you set in motion, this new moon, like this is why it's such a big, beautiful, powerful, creatively powerful, like with that beautiful Venetian energy, like get your zhuzh flowing. It's like, tell us a little bit about, um, how that will progress and why that's taking us all the way kind of through into 2023. Oh, are you talking, <clears throat> excuse me, or are you talking about the, um, the larger moon family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. I was like, are you talking about the moon family? Yeah, because. Well, that this area in our chart is, I'm under the understanding that this area in our chart is really going to be in a, play a really important role over the next couple of years. Well, also this particular degree is where all of the, the Capricorn planets were at. Everything was at the 22, 23. So now right. you've got um, everything at the Aquarius similar degree, you know? Um, so it is a larger, a larger, um, uh, what do you say? Story. It's a part yeah. of a larger story. Um, and it's all about the Aquarian, um, effort to change and to progress forward. And you have to remember that Saturn and Uranus are both the rulers of Aquarius. And since they're gonna be over, you know, next year and a half too, they're gonna be in this square formation for the most part, having some key picks. That's where like you, you're gonna be vacillating, all of us are vacillating between like what we know, what feels safe and comfortable and really wanting to break free and move forward in a real way. And also you have restrictions, people, you know, holding on to um, control and not wanting to let go. Living in uncertainty and being uncomfortable and what's possible is not easy. It's not easy. So this is a story of like, can we be, find comfort and, um, excitement about what is possible in the unknowns and in the uncertainties rather than, uh, you know, hunkering down, locking in, living in fear, afraid to change, afraid to move, you know, um, resisting, right? The, yeah, the change like that is happening, the change that the progress that is happening, the changes that are happening in the world and around us fast. are happening. So it's, and it's happening fast. So it's like, you want to be on board and you want to ride that wave to what's possible. If you resist, that's where your struggles are coming in. That's where you're going to have um, uh, possible issues or, or frustrations or um, problems, you know? So I think it's the initial, initial intention with this new moon for the larger scale is really learning to get uncomfortable with this, you know, fast moving, changing possibility energy that you just can't quite nail down. You have okay. to, I want to pose this. I have this idea that I'm like, I have a feeling this is this particular new moon is setting in motion. This idea of, cause so we've been, so many people are talking about this right now. It's like quantum leaping, quantum jumping, mm -hmm. really moving forward really so fast that you're like, whoa, yeah. what just happened? But it's yeah. that because, you know, and Pluto's in the 61, we've been talking a lot about the 61 lately. And what's interesting is that gate of wander, it's really, it's asking us to not get bogged down in the how, but yeah. to play in the potentials, to play in yeah. the bigger aspect, and then to bring it in and through and down and to refine, refine, refine. But it's that you can't have anything to refine if you don't bring something through and down. Yes. Now with this chart specifically, I just want to say too, it's like a quadruple split. So you see like this part is separated. This part is connected. This is connected. This is connected. So it's like a lot of disjointed energy and it's not flowing all the way through easily. Mm -hmm. So how can you bring an idea in and down very mindfully play in the potentials through meditation, through working out, whatever you feel like you need to do to move your energy through, mm -hmm. then speak the words out loud 
in integrity in truth of what you want yep. calibrate that feeling energy desire the good good feelings and then bring it in feel all the feelings and put it into action so what would it look like for you to be creative what would it look like for you to do something whatever it is you're trying to do whether that's paint a bedroom clean out a, a <laughs> yeah. closet you know do it creatively like think about things totally differently i think that's what we're kind of really being called to yes in this new moon and yeah what is creativity what is you know yeah, what is it the idea behind creativity, people are so stuck on this. Yeah. And I feel like this is part of the, the work around work. It's like, if you weren't an artist, if you weren't a, an actress, a singer, a dancer, a painter, painter you know, yeah. whatever, you're, you're, not a, you're not a creative person. Yeah, but the truth is, true. how we show up, the way we dress, the way we speak, the way we engage with people, the, you're the way you use your energy is creative. The way you make a meal is creative. The, rate, the way you um, engage with your kids and play is creative. The way you drive your car is creative. Like, I mean, come on. It shows up everywhere and it's the recognition, like I am a creative being just by being here. Yep. So everything I do is creative and it's starting to embrace and embody. That so we create our own reality. 100%. <laughs> you know, and this is that, that the, so what would it look like using that gate of wonder to mm -hmm. play in the idea that everything I do is creative? Yeah. That there is nothing that you don't do that is not creative. Yeah. That's and a using this shift. title. Mm -hmm. right? It's a massive quantum leap. So maybe that's it. Oh, my ear just cracked. Mate, there, that's it. We're done. You yeah. got the <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, okay. So I feel like we've covered a lot of the charts and what I would love to do quickly, Dom, do you, is that, do you have anything else you want to add before I talk quickly about the crystals? Mm, I think, I think we gave a, people a lot to think about and digest. Um, and uh, if there's questions, you know, we can, they can always reach out in the groups and, and stuff like that and connect with us, but, and definitely like give us some feedback about this. We did it a little bit different last time and we wanted to kind of bring it together. So we're experimenting. We so to be um, a Aquarian, man, apparently like I cut myself out of the video and <laughs> okay, it's not even Mercury retro. So, like, let's just yeah. hope this one makes it. Yeah. So I would love to hear how people are actually in, you know, enjoying and receiving this kind of combo uh, I think it's fascinating and you and I could go all day because it's so fun but I I wonder how it's being received and I hope people are really digging it but um, yeah let's dive into your crystals and your candles and what you're gonna create for the setting the intentions for this great new moon and yeah with what Dom said you know just to like really drive this home like we love doing this so whether there's like one person or like 200,000 people who dig it it's like we're doing this because we know there are people who are curious about like bringing these elements together. And when Dominique and I were talking about it, we were like, okay, I kind of see the astrological chart, the wheel as the blueprint, like, Hey baby, this is where the planets were when you were born. This is exactly what you have to work with. And of course there's free will in all of this. And then you're bringing that layer of the human design element it says, okay, here's also where the planets were born, but this is how your energy could be expressed in its higher note or its lower note. And as you move through your, your, your wheelhouse of your astrology, you get a better understanding of where you're meant to work in this time, where your biggest life lessons could show up for you. I mean, yeah. this is also available in your human design, but I just think it's such a wonderful marriage and I'm just so grateful we got a chance to do this. And, and for people watching, definitely go to your own chart where in your astrology chart where 23 Aquarius is or where the house that's ruled uh, by Aquarius and see where between six and 23, that is going to be lit up in your natal chart. Mm -hmm. So you can, if you have planets at Aquarius or if you have things that other uh, of those similar degrees in um, fixed signs. Did you so say six and 23? Well, you have got, you've got Saturn at six Aquarius 
and you've got the sun and moon all the way at 23. So you got action happening in that entire, you know, in all three deacons, you know, all 30 degrees for the most part, minus the end and the beginning. So right in there, that pocket, you have a lot of action happening. So wherever that is in your natal chart is where all this energy is playing out. Mm -hmm. um, and if you like, if you want to do a quick new moon read with me, yeah. that's always in the link. We can look to see where that's happening and what aspects it's making to your natal chart to see how, um, how to utilize this new moon for you. Um, but that's what you can do to start is to look at where. Okay, all let's give them an example then. And I'll, I'll put, I'll put timestamps so people can skip through this mm -hmm. if they don't want it, but let's give an example. So is somebody, okay, I'm coming to you and saying, okay, I've, I've established that my Venus is 10 degrees of Aquarius in the fifth. Degrees? In the fifth. So tell me how would that be affecting oh, yeah. everything else? And so everything. your Venus is at 10 degrees Aquarius in the fifth house. So yeah. you see Venus and, uh, and Jupiter are at 12 right? So, and then Mercury's at six. So your Venus is right here. Mercury's at 16, and, right? Yeah, 16, 12, and then yours is at 10. So your Venus is sitting right here between Saturn and Jupiter, right? During this new moon. So this is where your, your Venus is lit up. I mean, this is where you actually having all of these ideas and all of this stuff and you're, you're feeling, oh my God, all the creative potential. And I want to help I want to help people ground that creative potential so they can really use it. And uh, that's at Saturn close there. I want to the work I want to do in the world is to help women understand their worth and their creative potential and really step into that. So all of this and this moving into all of this is in your fifth house. This is like you are in your joy when you are helping women do this. And so you're going to all of these ideas that you've been having and all of the stuff you've been working on the past year and coming into human design, all of this stuff is coming in like, okay, like, what if this works? I have this idea and I want to do that. And I just, I, it's going to be a revolution. You know, that's very Aquarian. I want, what do you call it? The worth revolution for worth women. Revolution, baby, all the way. So you're so being inspired to put this revolution in motion. You, your, your Venus is lit up like a Christmas tree and all of this energy is supporting that dream of yours to have this worth revolution for women and help women really step into the, their unique power and their gifts and expressions. And let me just tell you guys, that made me feel so good. So this is why mm -hmm. having, you know, just that new moon reading, which is like a little crash course into like, this is what's being lit up like a Christmas tree in your <laughs> chart. How do you want to express this energy, you know? So you can do that through your astrology and you can also do that through your human design depending on like which one calls to you and like switch it up maybe try a different yeah. one every month so yeah. okay let's roll into the crystals just briefly okay. uh so that you guys have an understanding of why i chose what i chose and how it's going to really amplify this creative juicy energy so we've got hematite do you want to hematite. stop share or keep that up oh yeah we can there. stop sharing and go bigger and let's go big <laughs> Let's go big. Good one. See, Dom is so on the tech. I'm just like, what? I'm the Aquarius. <laughs> okay. So the hematite here, it's all about like grounding. It's actually a really great uh, circulatory stone as well to get like the blood flowing, the juices flowing, getting so oxygen and blood up to that beautiful brain of yours. Mm -hmm. It also is a very grounding and protective stone. And the theme for this month is like to me with so many planets in Aquarius and like people will be like, ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> like bring them back down to earth because some people may be not able to take action because they're so up in their heads and spinning with the how, 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 how the crystals will help bring you down to earth just in case you get a little flighty. And that can happen to any of us, regardless of how many planets you have in there. So it's about strengthening our connection to earth, making us feel a sense of safety and security and endowing us with courage, strength, and endurance. Because I feel as though this is the month we need a lot of courage because we're being called to, you know, maybe look at some of our demons with the inner child or the creative blocks we have, or if we were very creative when we were young and something happened where we stopped being creative, we might have to utilize courage to go there. And, and try out, try it again. 
Um, I'm also adding in some beautiful cedar. Ooh. Oh yeah, cedar, cedar boughs because they are, first of all, it's a lovely spiritual uh, plant. I have a bath, a cedar bath, a uh, detox bath that I'll put the link to. I created a, a lovely bath that's so cleansing. So it's purifying. It's also uh, provides you with strength and we need to be strong right now. It helps like boosting the immune system, cleansing out toxins and allowing us to breathe and be in the energy of this creative flow we require. And then of course, amethyst. Yeah. And amethyst is my fave. It's also raw. So it gives you the raw beauty, the raw quality. It's like stunning. And it helps you to feel healthy, to feel well. It's about communication. So it's funny because like we're going to have these communication challenges potentially throughout the month of February. And how can you have more power with the words you're speaking to feeling strong, having the rooting strength and the courage from the other stones that that amethyst helps you to get out what you need to say and speak in truth and clarity and to heal whatever wounds come forward that need your love and attention. So that's the combo. And I think it's going to be like mind blowingly amazing, obviously. <laughs> and you know, these are from my own little garden. The that's cedar. awesome. I cut them out of the garden. So when there's a big naked batch in my tree and my husband was like, what happened to the tree? <laughs> Nobody say anything. Okay. Shh, don't tell. Okay. So that is it for stones. That is it for kind of what we wanted to share with you. I have no idea what time we're at. I was just going to say, I went for hours, like who cares? <laughs> Those of you who've checked out, it's fine. We're going to end <laughs> soon. Um, but yeah, we're just really grateful for the energy we're able to cultivate together and the energy we're able to share with you and allow you to be, you know, creating and cultivating your own gorgeous energy so that we can show up more authentically yeah. and more holy and more creatively expressed. Yeah. <laughs> right? Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll put the links below for, you know, mini reads with us as well as the link to order your crisp your candle crystal you know, your witch and wicks crystal candle if you so desire one and i ship them internationally um yeah is there anything else that i'm missing i'll put that cedar bath link as well because i think you might love that yeah this is so, awesome. i'm excited i'm looking forward to it I'm so excited and for what this new moon will, will sort of set the tone, set the tone of yeah. what we're going to call in over the next couple of years. Yeah, for sure. So thank you again, everyone, for being with us. We appreciate you. We love you. We feel all of your support and we thank you from the bottoms of our beautiful hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until next month.